This is the B2X300, a full sheet metal frame 3D printer. And, hold on a second. Huh. Okay, well, no, today instead of talking about something actually interesting, we're going to talk about the Ender 3 again because they're kind of almost catching fire. <sighs> Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Maker's Muse and well, I have to do this video. I'd rather be talking about this, which is a really cool sheet metal kit from a company in Portugal, but well, I can't not mention the fact that Ender 3s have faulty connectors in them and it seems to be a really widespread issue. So let's put this thing aside and let's talk about it. What I have in front of me are the two Ender 3s that I have. This is the original Ender 3 that I received a fair few months ago this is the Ender 3 Pro that I just did a lot of tests on to perfect G-code. And I thought that would be the last video I'd do on these machines for a while. However, TH3D on Twitter put out a PSA about the connectors on these machines actually burning up. Which is really weird because they're XT60 connectors and I use these all the time in my combat robots and for remote control hobby applications. They're designed to handle, as the name implies, around 60 amps, almost continuous because of very low resistance bullet style connectors in a very handy nylon case. So what's going on? Why are they burning up like you can see in these photos here? Well, it seems to be that it's happening on one side only and it appears to be because they haven't been soldered correctly, they've been crimped. Now there is some conflicting reports as to if they're happening on the soldered ones or not, which is why I'm gonna crack open the two connectors I've got on my two machines to see if these are actually correctly soldered for low resistance or if they've been incorrectly crimped, which is something you should never do on an XT60 connector. So this is my Ender 3 that I've had for quite a while and I'll be frank, I actually print with the bed off for most of my prints. So I don't see any damage on my connector. The people who are reporting this are generally printing ABS and higher temperatures for a long period of time. Not crazy lengths of time, but more than I've done, so I don't see any damage here because I haven't forced a lot of current through this connector. But the thing about the XT60s is, as far as I understand, they're originally developed by Hobby King and they sell them under their Turnergy brand. And Hobby King's a huge online remote control seller and I use these in my remote control robots, as I said, and all that sort of stuff. They work great, they're really good connectors. But what you'll notice straight away is they're actually different colors here which is a dead giveaway to probably being knockoffs. Now what I actually have here are originals. So these are bought from Hobby King and the colors are actually different. These are a lot more washed out. This is a lot more saturated. This is more of a stronger yellow. And these are different. This is, this is uh, what this one should look like if it was original, but these ones are a bit different. They've got like mounting points and little uh, areas for like seals at the end. So, a bit different to the original, but this one, that's, this is how that should look. And it clearly, uh, <laughs> clearly doesn't. Anyway, this is going to the power supply, and then this is going to the 3D printer. So, let's just unplug this. By the way, that's way too easy to do. These connectors should be a lot more, a uh, lot more durable in terms of plugging them together. Look at this, you know, hear that? Hold it up to my, uh, hold it up to my lav. much, much more metallic, stronger connection, whereas this is very, very poor, not nearly as durable. So let's whip this heat shrink off. This is soldered. So this is on the Ender 3 that I've had for a while. Not a huge amount of solder, but that is correct. This is how you're meant to use these connectors. So that should give a strong electrical connection. Uh, whether or not the connector is any good, let's have a look at these two side by side. This is a Turnergy one and obviously an aftermarket one. A um, little bit uh, difficult to see. These pegs are set certainly <laughs> higher quality. Either way though, that's how you're meant to terminate these connectors with a solder joint. So let's just see what the power supply end looks like. So I'll get my knife and slit it here. That is soldered. Uh, yeah, actually looks like a decent enough solder joint. So that is how you're meant to terminate these connectors. That will give you a good point of contact and very limited, very low resistance across the connector. But let's see what the Ender 3 Pro looks like. Okay, so here we have the Ender 3 Pro. You can tell it's the Pro because it has the doubled up Y-axis uh, aluminum extrusion there. 
But here's the connectors. Again, they're slightly different colors and slightly mismatched as well. So let's pull this bad boy off. Okay, difficult to get a good angle on this, so I just moved things around a bit. Uh, and let's slice open one of these. Alrighty, so again, mine are soldered, which should be a good connection. That looks like a decent connection there. And uh, I'll check the power side, power supply side as well. So this is really short and hard to see, but again, that is soldered. So that means my N3 Pro and N3 all have soldered XT60s. Okay, so this is uh, Future Angus as he is editing this video. Uh, as I was going through the footage, I was starting to formulate another reason that these connectors might be burning up, and that might be that poor contact, because the original XT60s are quite difficult to pull apart, which implies a high amount of friction and contact area for those plugs. But if the aftermarket ones are easy to pull apart, that means a much poorer surface area or an area of contact, which means less current capability. And uh, you can imagine just one of these little sort of fingers contacting versus all four, and uh, running high current through a heat bed for 10, 20 hour print, that's definitely gonna start getting hot and as things get hotter, they start increasing in resistance. So even though my connectors are soldered and your connectors may well be soldered, uh, it might be a good idea to sort them anyway for proper genuine XT60s with a better contact. I know some people like to force the pedals out of the bullet connectors with a uh, screwdriver or something, um, but I'm not gonna take that chance, and some of you might be wondering if I'm gonna even just leave these exposed. No, I'm gonna desolder these and fit my own genuine XT60s, so I have a reliable high current connector and I don't have to worry about these things burning up. Okay, so my findings are that both the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro that I have, both have soldered XT60 connectors, which is the correct way to use them so you have as low resistance as possible, which means they won't get hot and start melting down. However, what happens if you don't have that? What if you have the ones that are being reported as just being crimped, which is a horrible thought because they're not designed for that at all? Well, you can solder them yourself. Um, this is a soldering jig sold by uh, Turnergy, Hobby King, whatever. I'm sure they're on eBay as well. And this is designed to clamp the XT60s in place. So you just unscrew it a bit, pop them in like that, and it gives you a nice sturdy mount to then solder them. I recommend a 40 watt or higher iron. And the idea is you want to pump it full of solder and have the wire in it and then the molten pool of solder goes and wicks into the wire and then forms a very, very good bond and low current interface between the wire and the connector, which means it's not going to burn up. Uh, so what's my theory as to why this is happening to some people? Well, I reckon what's happened is the uh, Creality Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro and all their printers are stupidly popular. And I reckon someone in the production line thought that they could save a few seconds by crimping and crushing these connectors together instead of soldering them properly and then heat shrinking them and passing them off. Now the issue is these machines don't get a burn-in test, they're a kit. So when someone does something like that in the production line and no one is able to check it or the quality control isn't there to check it, it gets passed on to you guys, the consumers, to find out. So please, if you're concerned about this, just whip one of the heat shrink sides off and see if it's soldered properly. If it is not, I reckon if you get a 40 watt iron and pump some solder in, you'll probably be okay. But personally, I would go with the genuine XT60s. They are significantly higher quality. It's really weird and a bit scary seeing them against the knockoffs, um, especially like I showed you the connection. Um, strength shows a much better contact, which means much better current transfer and capability. And I'm pretty much done talking about the Ender 3. I hope. I really do. I want to get back to really cool things. Guys, please let me. <laughs> oh, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And big thanks to TH3D for pointing this out. And also some of you guys on the stream that mentioned it too. I wanted to get the facts straight before doing a quick video. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye.